Hello, hello, it's Echo. A very long time ago, I made a video about using crayons and how they're kind of an underrated art supply. And today I wanted to talk about another art supply that I think is a little underrated because there are ways that you can use it that make it look incredible. So I've talked about this a little bit in other videos where I've used colored pencils, but there is kind of a secret to using colored pencils in a way that looks phenomenal. Honestly, I would say it's how they're supposed to be used. The secret to colored pencils. So today I'm gonna show you my fancy colored pencil secret. My desk is a disaster. So again, because I am an overachiever and I don't wanna put someone else's art in my video, I made my own coloring page. There will be a link in the description and probably a pinned comment if you want to download this and print it at home. And then you can do your own fun colored pencil stuff. I like drawing cartoon girls and this is just like a silly cotton candy, candy wife. I actually learned this secret to colored pencils from a Skillshare tutorial like two years ago. You really do learn some stuff from Skillshare. This is not sponsored by Skillshare, but they have sponsored me in the past. But it was such a good tip. Like if I took nothing else away from the tutorial, I did take this one tip. So we're gonna start with the way that most people will do coloring pages. If I was a kid, this is how I would do it. I would be coloring in all the areas, making sure to stay in the line, maybe doing like a little bit of cross hatching, but for the most part, just going back and forth to fill in the spaces. For this one, I decided to give her peppermint eyes, cotton candy hair, and just like a pink, I guess, grape dress. I was inspired by that one character from Candyland. What's his name? Is he like the licorice guy? And I feel like you see a lot of stripes in candy. This is like the straightforward, normal way to use colored pencils. This didn't take me relatively long. It looks fine. This is the normal way to color. Everyone colors like this, at least some point in their lifetime. If nothing else, when you start out, this is usually how you will start coloring with colored pencils. Definitely not the worst piece of artwork I've ever created. But that's not why we're here. We're here to learn about magical coloring hacks. So before we get into the secret ingredient that makes your colored pencil drawings amazing, we're gonna have to talk about the different types of colored pencils that exist. So there's hard lead, soft lead, and watercolor pencils. I almost never know what kind I have. I just kind of throw all of mine into like a big Tupperware container, so they all get mixed up. In my opinion, watercolor colored pencils are the best type of colored pencils because they blend the easiest. Have you ever had one of those like colored pencils that you, you try and draw and it's just like no color is coming on and it's like super glossy and it feels like you just have to like force it and it hurts your hand really bad. That's a hard lead colored pencil. In my experience, if your colored pencils are not labeled, the best thing to do is just swatch a bunch of the colors that you wanna use so that you can figure out which ones are going to work the best. I did this with a watercoloring paper because these usually hold up the best. That's another thing. If you're gonna be drawing with colored pencils, I highly recommend getting a watercolor pad because watercolor paper works really, really well with colored pencils, especially if you're gonna be using this method. So let's talk about swatches. First of all, get all your colored pencils, your big old bag or box or whatever it is, pull out all the colors that you think you wanna use and then swatch them. Just take a piece of paper and then draw a bunch of little squares so that you can see what each color actually looks like when it's on paper. I just put all of mine in a row next to each other so I could keep track of which colored pencil went to which swatch. Okay, so now I'm gonna introduce you to the magical secret ingredient. Also, you're probably gonna need some Q-tips and or a paintbrush. This is mineral spirit. I got a really big tub of it for like $7 at Walmart. You can find smaller ones at art stores, but I like to buy in bulk, at least when it comes to art supplies. Mineral spirits are like an evaporating chemical that help you blend the pigments on your paper without ruining your paper. If you don't have mineral spirits, that's fine. There are other things that you can use that aren't quite as effective, but will still work. Also, just in case you didn't know, I made a coloring book of anime girls that's available on Amazon, as well as a bunny eating ramen sketchbook. Ha ha ha, merch. I like bunnies. What was I saying? Oh, I did a little bit of an experiment to show you side by side the effect that these chemicals have. So in this, the first two swatches, the red and pink are watercolor pencils. The third color, the cyan, is just a regular colored pencil. The kind of Crayola colored pencil you would get at Walmart. The reason that I recommend watercolor colored pencils is because you could technically even do this with water, but water is more likely to warp your page. In this experiment, I'm showing you the effects of 90% alcohol, hydrogen peroxide, nail polish remover, and then mineral spirits. Hopefully this will give you a little bit of an idea of how these different chemicals are going to affect 
your artwork. Definitely do lots of experimenting with swatches. It can be really helpful for finding out how your materials are going to interact. So after I put all of my colors down, I went through with my mineral spirit and I brushed all of the bottom so that I could see how well it was going to work with each type of colored pencil. From there, I picked out all my colors and I started coloring. This coloring page, took a lot longer than the first one. I would say maybe like two or three times as long. In large part because I was coloring in circular motions to try and make sure that I was evenly distributing as much pigment as I could. When I'm doing color, I really like to add gradients. So for each section, I tried to pick two of each color. So two cyans, two pinks, two reds, and then lots of purples. If you want your colored pencil art to look pretty and flat, you're gonna have to spend a little bit more time just going in small circles and then also going over the entire thing in slightly larger circles to try and get like a nice even layer of pigment. But from there, you're just gonna take either a Q-tip or a paintbrush and you're gonna use whatever chemical you're working with and just brush the pigments together. That's gonna help smooth out all of the texture in your colored pencils. And what's really nice about it, like I have mentioned before, is that it doesn't warp your paper the way water does. So what's gonna happen is that once you brush your entire coloring page with whatever chemical you're working with, it's gonna look wet. You just have to let it sit and once it's dry, it'll look like this. See, all of the puddles have dried out and now it's just a pretty colored pencil page. Very similar and yet very different. Now, of course, if you're younger, you're probably not going to have access to mineral spirits unless you get help from a parent, which is why I recommend using something like nail polish remover or 90% um, alcohol that might be under your bathroom cabinet. I think that's all I have for you today. Maybe go check out my crayon drawing video. I'm, I'll give you 500 awesome points for making it all the way to the end of this video. Maybe I'll bring back awesome points. I don't know. But that's all I have for you for now. I hope that you have a great rest of your day and that I see you later. Goodbye. Colored pencil secrets. Secrets.